Okay, uh, Detective Chief Inspector Darren Fielke, uh, Serious and Organised Crime Branch, and also the Senior Investigating Officer of Task Force Ironside. At about 4.50pm on Sunday the 21st of August, detectives from Serious Organised Crime Branch attached to Task Force Ironside attended at an address on the York Peninsula and arrested a 47-year-old male formerly of New South Wales. This male was arrested on a first instant warrant and has since been charged with multiple counts of trafficking controlled drugs, including methamphetamine, ecstasy, cocaine, cannabis and money laundering offences. The controlled drugs allegedly trafficked by this male and his syndicate are valued in the millions of dollars. The male was refused bail and attended the Adelaide Magistrates Court today where he's been remanded in custody. The arrest of this male deals a significant blow to organised crime. Police will allege he is the head of a serious organised crime syndicate that operated both nationally and internationally. His syndicate was a heavy user of the Anom encrypted communications platform and it was used to facilitate his illegitimate business. Police are aware that this male fled Australia in around April 2021 to avoid apprehension in relation to the seizure of 50 kilos of methamphetamine that was located in a truck secreted in horse feed at Port Wakefield. Task Force Ironside investigators have since been working tirelessly with our law enforcement partners to locate this male um, and acting on information from the community and our partners, we've been able to successfully apprehend him over the weekend. This male is also the subject of an FBI racketeer influenced and corrupt organisation indictment, also known as a RICO indictment. This also reveals the level at which he was involved in organised crime and the significance of his use and influence on the Anom uh, encrypted platform. Task Force Ironside investigators continue to work with our partners in, in relation to this particular issue. I'll take any questions that you have. How did you find it? Uh, good police work. It's, uh, it's no secret. We've um, had our people from Task Force Ironside for some months now working um, away trying to locate him. And that is, it's a, it's a team effort at the end of the day. We use our other law enforcement partners, we use members of the community, um, we use our own investigative techniques to do that. So um, a really good effort by the Task Force Ironside investigators. Were New South Wales police involved in any way? Not at this point, no. We've, we've been dealing with New South Wales Police. We know that this person is previously from New South Wales. Um, we have contact with them, but they're not involved um, in the arrest in any way. As far as his um, significance in any international uh, syndicate that you mentioned, can you give us any more information on that? Um, the RICO indictment that's been brought on by the FBI, which is a, it's a key piece of their legislation in relation to fighting organised crime, basically emanates from his use and influence on the Anom encrypted application. So what that uh, essentially says is that he is not um, a minnow in many respects in terms of the level of organised crime that he's involved in. He's a higher level organised crime player um, and a, a really significant uh, arrest for organised crime in South Australia and for that matter, Australia. So he was on your radar in April 2021. What happened after that? Uh, we believe he fled Australia um, around April 21 to, to avoid apprehension in relation to that particular matter. Um, and since that time, uh, using all the powers and all the contacts that we have, we've been able to um, track him back to Australia um, and then ultimately find him um, on the York Peninsula. So he's come back to Australia after fleeing? He has, yes. And can you give any further information about where he fled to and, and where the, this syndicate he's involved in is, is traced to? Sure, he, he's, uh, he is an Australian based uh, person, so predominantly um, his organised crime activity was operating out of Australia with some international contacts, uh, which is not unusual for organised crime. Um, so he, he comes back, as, as he comes back home, what, what the draw for him to come back home is, we're not exactly sure yet, investigations are continuing on that. But suffice to say, he's a significant player. We're talking multiple kilos of methamphetamine uh, worth uh, between sort of 60 and 80 million dollars. Um, although we've seized 50 kilos, our review of the Anon platform and his and his syndicate use of that particular platform has revealed a number of other um, quantities of methamphetamine that was trafficked across the country. Um, cocaine, kilos of cocaine, thousands of ecstasy tablets, thousands of uh, uh, kilos of um, ecstasy powder that was yet to, be, yet to be pressed into tablets, 
in excess of 380 pounds of cannabis, uh, well over millions of dollars of cannabis, etc. So, um, th these are. This is not an insignificant arrest in terms of the scale that this person was involved in. Um, and all of those drugs um, ultimately end up in the community and cause harm to our community. So from our perspective, having him arrested and breaking down this syndicate is, is a really significant effort. Since the arrest, has he been cooperating with police? Uh, he was only arrested yesterday afternoon. Uh, we're still in the very early stages in terms of continuing the investigation, if you like. Much of our efforts have been um, associated with, with locating him um, and uh, aligning all the alleged offences that will bring against him. Uh, so from that regard, we, we're still dealing with him. Were there any other arrests yesterday in association with him on that property? No, there wasn't. Are you expecting more arrests connected to this one? We'll, we'll continue to have a look at the anom material, which we have been now for some months. Um, more arrests around this syndicate um, are not out of the question. That, that, could, that could happen. Uh, but at this stage, uh, we think we've got um, most of the syndicate, but we, we, we won't stop looking at the end of the day. We saw a major um, attempt at drop off of cocaine from an international shipment um, on the York Peninsula last year. Is this uh, related at all? Uh, no, no, it's, it's not related at all. It's, it's quite, a separate, quite a separate syndicate. Um, but it just shows you how organised crime permeates um, at, a, at a number of levels. And you know, serious and organised crime branch and, and Task Force Iron side, you know, we know that there are people who open the door um, to facilitate organised crime. All of these people are on our radar. doesn't matter what role you have in the organised crime syndicate. You could be the head of the syndicate, which we'll allege this particular male is. You could be uh, the people who work in the back room, the lawyers, the accountants, Whoever that is that's involved in organised crime, it can be the drug runner that's working for them. So we'll have a look at every level of organised crime and, and seek to take it out. So you're saying that the drugs were manufactured on the North Peninsula and they were sent out from there? No, no, I'm not saying that at all. No, no. There's, we, we don't have found no evidence of drug manufacture on the North Peninsula. And you mentioned this is a really significant arrest. Uh, how does this compare to previous drug-related um, arrests that you've made here in South Australia? It's, it's just as significant. I mean, people would have been following um, the Ironside story almost for over, well, over 12 months now. So there's a number of organised crime syndicates that have been uh, dismantled, I suppose, um, in relation uh, to, the, to the task force investigation. This is just yet another syndicate and another head of a syndicate um, that, that will join the rest of the heads of syndicates that we've already arrested and are currently in custody. In, from, 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 this from this arrest? Oh, I think it sends a message clearly to, to other organised crime syndicates that we never stop looking. Um, I have a group of Task Force Ironside investigators and, and for that matter, um, all the investigators that work at Serious Organised Crime Branch don't take that eye off the ball. That's, that's what we do day to day. So um, if, if there are people out there, individuals out there thinking that they're going to get away with um, engaging in organised crime and money laundering and large-scale drug trafficking, well, they want to have another think because we've got a whole group of people um, that will look to bring them to justice at the end of the day. Um, so this is another one. They should, um, they should always be aware that we're looking. Do we know when the man returned to Australia? Uh, no. No, we don't. Um, yeah, look, I think the, the best link in with this particular job is the Port Wakefield um, 50 kilo um, seizure back in April 2021. 20, so we didn't seize any drugs yesterday okay. when we arrested him. Um, we, we have some exhibits, clearly, but they're, but they're not drug exhibits. So I, I can't show you anything in particular from yesterday's, um, yesterday's arrest. Um, and some of the other pictures, if you like, are sort of contained on the Anon platform, so I, I can't really give you those, but your, your best link in is the, the 50 kilos that was seized earlier. Great. Thanks, guys.